Life in the scalper pandemic can seem hopeless. You may feel like you're stuck with your elderly graphics card dragging you down for what seems like forever. The hope, of course, is that one day soon the sun will emerge from behind a cloud and stock will return to normal. But what does normal look like? More importantly, how fast does normal run a selection of popular games from the last couple of years? The subtitle for this video is I spent nearly £700 on this card, so I'm damn well going to get some content out of it, part 1 of 56. AMD haven't been exactly covering every base for the last few seasons, whereas a decade ago you knew from the model number which cards were high-end and which weren't, for the time being we have no way of knowing for certain if the RX 6700 XT is the mid-range model, implied by the name, or an entry-level model in the RDNA 2 lineup. Either way, the £400 suggested retail price alone would tie it for the most money I've ever spent on a graphics card, and I paid 70% more than that. At the end of the day, once the dust settles, will it have been worth the wait? If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know I test my graphics cards, not through a high-end monster PC, but something more reasonably priced. The RPG PC recently saw an upgrade to 16GB, mainly because Warzone, but the rest of the specs remain the same and are roughly in line with what the Steam Hardware Survey says is the most popular spec out there in 2021. Speaking of Warzone, thanks to the RAM upgrade, even the new update is a pretty pleasant experience, with none of the massive stuttering and texture issues of the past. Alas, I still suck at the game, and the one round I got more than two kills, I realised I forgot to hit record on my capture PC. Sad stories aside, I saw an average of 128 FPS and lows of 84. For a cinematic style adventure, Horizon Zero Dawn is really crying out to be run at higher resolutions than 1080. The 6700 XT certainly has the horsepower for 1440 or better. In favour quality mode at 1080, we saw averages of 112 and lows of 81. I didn't test it, but I suspect 1440 would still allow for over 60 FPS gameplay. Even with settings cranked and everything looking pretty as hell, Fortnite manages a high refresh experience here. Over 168 FPS average and 87.51% lows should be enough for most players, though you could always sacrifice some fancier settings if you wanted a 1440-144Hz experience. Enlisted is a new one to my benchmark suite, and frankly it's not my cup of tea, but hey, Crisp covers it and I just go where he goes. Performance was good, averaging 105 FPS in ultra settings. The game's still in early development, so performance is likely to change over time. Hopefully for the better, but uh, one can never be certain of these things. Oh, <coughs> zone! This is an interesting one. The medium was clearly designed with RDNA 2 in mind, being a Xbox Series X launch title. Nevertheless, in 1080 high with ray tracing enabled, averages hovered in the mid 40s, no doubt suffering from the huge stutters when switching between realities. With hindsight, I could probably have gone up to Ultra Nightmare here, as regular old Nightmare resulted in over 300 FPS averages at 1080. I don't get quite as excited for Doom Eternal as I did for the previous game in the Doom series, but this is still an incredible performance in an excellent game. Ray
running Apex Legends in 1080 at high settings results in averages of 176 FPS and 1% 1 lows of 114. For context, that's about twice the performance of a GTX 1650 Super. It still doesn't make me a good player. Yeah, I'm back in the canned benchmarks again. If after my console killer video you thought I'd actually start playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla for my benchmark videos, I'm sorry to have disappointed you, but I'm a lazy, lazy man. This card scores an average of just a hair under 90 FPS and keeps over 60 FPS at the low end. Cyberpunk 2077 runs disappointingly poorly on the RX 6700 XT. 1080 high with high textures gives an average in the high 50s and 1% lows just shy of 24 FPS. And that's before I switch on ray tracing. Enabling that feature absolutely annihilates the frame rate down to just 26 FPS with lows of 20. I presume this has something to do with why we don't have a true 9th gen console version yet. With a better CPU, Forza Horizon could run at 1080 high settings at 199 FPS average and 158 lows. As it is, with the Ryzen 3 3100 holding things back, you'd only see about 140 FPS here. Happily, you'd probably still see over 120 FPS in 1440. So, what's our conclusion here? That it's an amazing card? <laughs> it sure is. Is it worth it in 2021? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I like context. Things look much clearer when you have something to compare them to. If there's any overall message implied by the Scalper Pandemic series, it's that almost all of these cards can play the same games, with some compromises, at playable frame rates. With the exception of ray tracing, there's nothing the RX 6700 XT can do that cheaper cards can't, if you're willing to make some small sacrifices. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.